everybody. Hi. So we saw Thea heading off into Arts Unknown with her father. What can you tell us about where things pick up? All I can say is that the Thea Queen that you guys saw leave the end of season two is not the Thea Queen that we see enter back in season three. There is a, a tectonic shift in her life, or in herself, pretty much. Have you had to do any training or anything? Maybe I've got a personal trainer now. Maybe I hit the gym every day of the week and it hurts. I might be sore on a daily basis. Will you be picking up a bow and arrow? I have not <laughs> trained with Patricia yet. And that is something that, uh, you know, it's something I ask about and I'm sure everybody asks about and uh, none of us get an answer. <laughs> How much do you enjoy physical wellness? I am quite obsessed with it, actually. Um, it's something that I've always wanted to do, but I completely get it. I've got a really, like, kind of tiny, tiny frame, so people don't think of me as a person that to do so. Um, but, so now it's, like, actually, it's amazing being able to be taken seriously in a different route. Like, it's a totally, it is opening up, like, just, for me, it's made my body so much better. It's made my diet better, and just... I feel like it's opening up so many doors just naturally by being able to, being told to work out is a great thing. <laughs> being forced to do it is great. <laughs> um, but what about Thea and Roy? What, can you tell us anything about what the future might be for those I mean, I can tell you that they obviously cross paths quite a few times again, but um, I can't really give much information out about that. They're obviously right now not in a good place, and she is obviously very mad at him, and is probably not going to forgive him right away. So that's that's probably where they're at at the moment. So you go from you know, one family member, the kind of the good guy, Oliver Queen, to you know, kind of the bad guy. Yeah. So I mean, you have to kind of play the I don't know. It seems like a very nuanced part of it. Yeah. So can you? I mean, can you talk a little bit about that in terms of like this, you know, this next like, few episodes? I don't know, whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly not allowed to talk about yeah, too honestly, much about yeah. the uh, the next few episodes, but I can say that um, her relationship with Malcolm is very, very interesting. Uh, mainly because why would somebody, even if it was your father, why would you go off with this person who you know is a mass murderer? Um, but I think the reasoning behind Thea is the fact that this whole time, she's the thing that's really been screwing with her is trust and the fact that it's just continuously, continuously broken. So I think that Malcolm is actually the first person in her life that she looks at and automatically doesn't trust because she knows not to and there's no letdown there. If anything, like he's already let her down so much and she, there's already been so much letdown to the point where, if anything, he can only do a little bit, make it, things a little bit better for her. Um, and I think she kind of sees that. And, I think, yeah, I think she trusts not trusting him, I guess. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but it's just, I think it's nice, a refresher for her to not have room for heartbreak in that. Like, she, she's not going to get her heart broken from Malcolm, I don't think, unless he actually kills her. So, <laughs> that's not happening, though. Not happening. Did not put that out there. That's not happening. I take that back. <laughs> Erase that from the interview. <laughs> Thea's not being killed by Malcolm. <laughs> she is not dying. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys.